It always interests me if people actually believe these things, or just make them up for the money. Indeed, the story of having the veil lifted to see the spirit world is a compelling way to convince followers that he is a spiritual writer. I'm sure people who believe in that sort of thing will be more inclined to read the books. Especially if you can prove that your doomsday books are based on your ability to see the future through spirits. Or maybe he just has delusions. And really thinks he had an out-of-body experience. But we'll probably never know. Laurie and her last husband, Chad Daybell, are convinced that the world is ending. And they believe that they have been chosen by God to usher people into the next millennium. On top. Chad had this belief that some people on this earth weren't really the people they were supposed to be. In fact, he believed they were zombies who had lost their souls. And that evil had taken over their bodies. And the only way to put their spirits in heaven, would be to kill their bodies. Before we go any further, let me tell you something. I believe that Chad and Laurie Daybell's story is the most bizarre and twisted of any family annihilator story. Because what happened to those kids is, is horrendous. Laurie Vallow Daybell was born in San Bernardino, California, on the 26th of June 1973. She had a sister, Summer Shiflett, and two brothers, Adam and Alex Cox. Laurie married her high school boyfriend, Nelson Yanes, in 1992, when she was 19 years old. But after only less than a year, the marriage ended. Then, in her late 20s, she eloped with William LeJoy on the 22nd of October 1995. The couple lived in Texas, and Laurie gave birth to their son Colby in 1996, before divorcing in February 1998. And in that same year, Joseph Fryan, a man who had never been married or had children, moved to Phoenix, from Oklahoma. He was waiting for the right woman to come along, and he found her in 2001. In his early 40s, he began dating his hairdresser, Laurie. Even though Laurie was only 28, with two ex-husbands, she was still a housewife. In fact, Ryan proposed to her just months after they met. Not long after they got married, and it happened the same year. Ryan also adopted Colby, and shortly after, Laurie announced that she was pregnant. And in September of 2002, the couple had a daughter named Tylee Ashlyn Ryan, then the family moved to Texas. For some unknown reasons, on the 14th of August 2004, Laurie filed for a divorce, stating that Ryan was a bit of a perfectionist and unpredictable. But he has never physically assaulted anyone. Suddenly, Laurie realized she might not get full custody of her children, so she claimed that Ryan had sexually abused Tylee and Colby. So, two expert witnesses were called on by the court to investigate the matter, and both had concluded that Ryan had not sexually harassed either of the children. Even though Colby had asserted that Ryan had abused him in the past, something he still claims today. Considering what they learned during their investigation, both of them believe that Laurie was lying about the abuse to gain full custody of their children. Despite being wrong, they submitted their findings to the court. But, Laurie told them if this doesn't turn out as she wants, she will take her children and go to Mexico. In the end, every other weekend, Laurie was supposed to take the kids to Ryan, but she never did. The day after the verdict, Laurie's brother Alex approached Ryan in the parking lot and threatened to kill him with a stun gun. When Alex was arrested, he pleaded guilty to aggravated assault, and was sentenced to 90 days in prison. So, to keep her kids away from Ryan, Laurie and her family moved to Arizona. Unfortunately, much to the dismay of his daughter, Ryan followed. He only wanted to have a relationship with his daughter and his adopted son. Despite the custody order, Laurie continued to violate it, and was eventually charged with judicial interference. During this period in Laurie's life, she met Charles Vallow, born on the 17th of August 1956 in Louisiana. 
It turns out Charles had been married twice, and after his second marriage got soured. And after years of arduous work and dedication to sales, Charles finally became a successful businessman. Charles and Laurie met in Texas in 2003. They then traveled to Nevada on the 24th of February 2006, and got married in Las Vegas. However, as part of her agreement, Vallo, a lifelong Catholic, would convert to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, if he were to marry her. After adopting Vallo's grandnephew, Joshua Jackson Vallo, in 2013, Vallo moved to Kauai, Hawaii, at the end of 2014. As early as 2015, Laurie read the Standing in Holy Places books by Chad Daybell, which reportedly led to her becoming obsessed with them. But now, getting back to Arizona was the focus of the family in 2016. Her sons would travel out to Arizona, and she would meet up with them for a visit. However, they said that Laurie also left the house all day after Charles left to work, even though she didn't have a job. Her only job in the past that Cheryl had ever known her to have was that of a hairdresser. Since JJ was diagnosed with autism after his father's death, the legal system in Arizona tended to favor him much more heavily. There was no question about how the Valos had packed up and relocated to an island in Hawaii. They had chosen a place that they knew Ryan would not follow. In 2016, the Volos moved back to Arizona after operating a small juice business on the island for a few years. During this time, the Valos told friends that they could not properly treat JJ while he was on the island. In the fall of 2018, Laurie and her friend Melanie attended the Preparing a People event, where Laurie and Chad met for the first time. Milani reported to her mother later that Laurie confessed that she and Chad were falling in love after the event. In the past, Chad had explained to her that they were both above human, heavenly, godlike beings, leading multiple intertwined lives. She told Chad that he had lived 31 lives, and she had lived 21 lives, all living on different planets, all living in other realities. Then Chad told her she had been his wife in seven of the lives that he had lived. When Milani heard that, she suggested they get divorced to be together, Laurie said the LDS church does not permit it. Several weeks after their initial meeting, Charles left town on a business trip and Laurie held an intimate overnight gathering at her home. Milani and Chad were in attendance, who was speaking at another conference in Mesa, Arizona. Milani later recalled Chad lavishing attention on Laurie and expounding upon his unusual religious beliefs and the deeper mysteries of God, with a small group of the overnight guests. As part of his trip to Arizona, Chad was a guest on a podcast with Laurie. Later that night, Chad stayed over at Laurie's place. As of the 22nd of January 2019, Chad sent Laurie an email stating that Charles' body had been taken over by an evil spirit named Nick Schneider. According to this strange belief, people either became light or dark as time passed on. Chad referred to others as light or dark, and multiple gradations in between. He believed the dark individuals were from this earth, but were followers of Satan. Those who were light were followers of Jesus Christ. Laurie was thrilled and attracted to this belief system, and became increasingly fixated on this newfound purpose. At the end of January, Laurie called Charles while he was on a business trip to let him know that, she did not care about him or JJ anymore. Then she proceeded to tell him that if he got in her way, she would kill him. She explained that she had a guardian angel waiting to help her dispose of bodies. In the process of talking with him, she would only call him by the name of Nick Schneider. After Charles got to the airport, he discovered that Laurie had cancelled his flight. And he had to book another flight home. When Charles arrived at the Phoenix airport, he stepped out to the parking lot to find his truck was missing so he caught a ride back home where his house keys did not work. Eventually, he called the police, and they helped him get into the house, where inside, his clothes, his business laptop were missing, and JJ's body to the ground. Charles then checked his business bank account, and found that Laurie had taken $35,000 out. And by now, 
Charles was concerned about Laurie's mental health and the company's safety of those around her. Doris, she's had kind of a drug for me now, isn't it? She thinks she's your LDS? Yes. She thinks she's married to Morona in the past. This is her you age. think she's what? We're married to Morona at the top of the temple. Angel. Angel. Angel LDS. Angel. They don't she's let me in there. Probation, and she knows when the second coming is happening next year, so does the prophet. Okay. He knows and she knows she knows about it. She meets with Morona and Jesus Christ face okay. to face in the temple every day. I've tried to support her as much as I could, but it's gotten really, really bad lately. She's had a break. She says, I'm Nick Schneider. I've taken over Charles' body. And Charles is either killed. I'm going to kill you. You're going to be murdered today or tomorrow. I can, have, I can do it. I'm about to have my priest with my power. She gets a priest of blessing. She does. Um, so who's so Nick Schneider? Oh, okay. That's who I am. Now, I'm assuming you guys have phones. Is that an iPhone? Yes. Have you, are you able to track to see where her phone is right now? Her phone's I hear right iPhones. Her phone's with oh, your phone. Now, how do you get? Her phone. Because it was in the car this morning when she pulled up to school. I took the keys out of her purse out so she couldn't leave. That's when I called you guys. Okay. Somehow she has a pair of seven keys and left with my dog. And so I don't know where she, I saw this in her purse. Don't think she's here. They wouldn't have given me a key to the room. I was going to go, if you guys will come with me, see if she's in the room. No, we car. can't just go in. If you're not allowed to go in, we can't either. We can so all just. I'm not she didn't go. Okay, that's going to be up to them if they okay. allow you to go sure. in. Now, we can't. Now, you guys are you married, so there shouldn't be. No, we're waiting for However, a... Charles made the mistake of getting into Laurie's car and stealing her purse. He was using her phone to communicate with colleagues, friends, and family about the state of her mental health. Laurie was able to get sympathy from the police officers when she was taken to the police station to have the mental health evaluation done. I don't know, and I'm not going to take sides, right, no, but no, just talking know. to you, I mean, I don't see you being a danger to yourself or any, anybody else. You got your kids to school. Right. I don't know, but I'm not going to play sides. I'm just going to let you know that we are required, if you're here, that we will, even against with fours if we have to, right. if you're still here when it's approved, um, we'll have to take you to CBI. Okay. And what is it called that I'm just going to write down? Community okay. Bridges. Okay. That's where we take you. Now, I don't know who he went through to get the order taken care of. That's what I'm saying. Out. How do you even get that? He got that in the middle of the night? How do you get something in the middle of the night? It's family members can do it for other ones who have like drug dependency or not getting help, <laughs> mental he, health Yeah, but how issues. would he get, he had to come here? Isn't it stuff closed? It's not, it's not here. There, there are places you can go. So. How would he think? I would, this? how would you think of something? I don't know. It's, I don't okay, know. sorry. So, this is good. He calls everybody on my phone, so now he has phone access to all my yep. friends, and he's calling hmm. them all to tell yeah. how crazy I am, and whatever. Because he got wow. sent, you know. And this is just a recent thing? Has he done this before, or like... This is in like 24 hours. Like, or he's um, done, he's yeah. done... Like, stuff has like he done this, this before? before? Yeah. But this whole situation Not this extreme, happened, no. but he's been ballistic where we had to leave because he was being awful, and I don't want yeah. him to hurt one of the kids or something. Probably three or four times that I can remember. Yeah, 13 years. Yeah. Absolutely, Tylee would be comfortable with her mother, and she is most supportive of Laurie. In conclusion, it was determined by the cops and the community bridge staff that Laurie was not a danger to her or anyone else. In February 2019, Charles filed for divorce from Laurie, taking his lawyer's advice to remove Laurie as the beneficiary of his life insurance policy at the same time. Furthermore, he filed for an order of protection from Laurie, stating a genuine concern for his family's safety. So in the divorce petition, he stated that Laurie has recently been obsessed with near-death experiences and spiritual visions. She has told him that she is sealed and that all her lives will be permanently associated with Mormon prophet warrior Maroney. And she has lived on numerous planets before this present lifetime. She also told Charles, in the past life, 
She believes she lived as Mary French back in the 1800s, who is Joseph Smith Jr.'s natural grandmother. And she was supernaturally appointed by God to lead the 144,000 chosen into the millennium. She believes that spiritual visions and revelations are arriving to enable her to gather and prepare those chosen to dwell in the New Jerusalem. This is in the days of the Great Tribulation. Then, after their physical separation, on the 29th of January 2019, the two had a phone conversation during which they discussed their divorce. Then Laurie disappeared from Charles's life just two days after filing for divorce, and didn't tell anyone where she was staying for 58 days. Laurie sent Tylee to stay with her relatives and JJ but did not reveal why or where she was heading. In the aftermath of Laurie's mystery trip, Charles told his lawyer that he would like to withdraw his divorce petition to work it out with Laurie. Unfortunately, it did not work out, and things spiraled out of control. In the summer of 2020, during the conversation with her friend Milani, Laurie thought that Tylee actually became a zombie when she was 13, and her attitude began to change. Milani said that Laurie also started having visions of Charles Vallow, her husband of 11 years, dying on the 11th of July 2019, which is what exactly happened. So on the 11th of July, the morning Charles Vallow died. Charles Vallow arrives at Chandler, Arizona, home of his estranged wife, to pick up his son, JJ, at 7.35 a.m. Alex Cox is also at the house, as is Laurie's 17-year-old daughter, Tylee Ryan. Then, Laurie leaves the house at 7.49 a.m. with Charles' rental car and his mobile phone. Charles Vallow was shot once in the chest as he was standing and a second time as he lay on the ground at 7.49 a.m. At 8.32 a.m., Cox calls 911 to report a shooting, which he claims has just happened. He is given instructions for performing CPR and indicates he is attempting life-saving measures. Before 8.40 a.m., paramedics and police arrive. But they indicated Cox had not attempted CPR on the dying man. 8.48 a.m., Laurie Vallow returns home. She tells police she left the house with her children when she heard a shot. Her brother, however, had told police she had already left when he fired the gun. Cox and Laurie Vallow were taken to the police station, and were released when the shooting was determined to be self-defense. And what is the emergency? Uh, I, I shot my brother-in-law. Okay, what part of his body is injured? In the chest. Okay, is he awake and responsive or unconscious? Unconscious. Okay, is he breathing? I can't tell. Okay, are you wanting, are you willing to go over to him and check? Sure. Okay, do you just let me know if you see his chest going up and down? How old is he? It's not moving, he's 60. Okay, and are you wanting to start CPR? No, I don't know how to do that. What's his name, your brother-in-law? Charles Vallow. How long ago did this occur? Did it just happen? Yeah, maybe five minutes before I called. Okay. That afternoon, Laurie Vallow's landlord later said there was a pool party at her house, with loud music and lots of people swimming. The police investigation also turned up text messages involving Laurie Vallow, Cox, Chad Daybell, and Milani Boudreau, whom Cox would later marry. They allegedly discuss harming Charles, a dark spirit and a demon blocking his wife's extraordinary abilities to help lead the world during a doomsday scenario. Laurie tried to collect Charles' $1 million life insurance policy, only discovering that she was no longer the beneficiary. As of September of this year, Laurie, Tylee, and JJ were all relocating to Rexburg, Idaho. Also, a new character came into action. Laurie's niece, Milani Boudreau, had been married for 11 years to a man named Brandon Boudreau. Despite that, after becoming involved in the Chad Laurie scandal, she left him, left her four children and joined these guys' criminal activities. 
Chad Daybell and Tamara Douglas were married at the time, and both were from Springville, Utah. Chad was born on the 8th of November 1968 in Provo, Utah. Chad claims that he experienced what he believes to have been a near-death experience, while cliff jumping when he was 17. He says that he passed over into another dimension and discovered a world beyond this one. In a book, he wrote about the experience in 2017 titled Living on the Edge of Heaven, in which he said he had another terrifying experience in California when he was 20 years old. He was running away from a huge wave in a cove. It is believed that his spirit left his body, and he witnessed future events, including those of his unborn children. Tammy was born on the 5th of April 1970. When she was just a little girl, she loved reading, so much so that she started her own lending library. She attended high school with Chad, but the two were not friends at the time. Chad embarked on a Mormon mission for two years to New Jersey the following year. Upon his return, he began attending Brigham Young University, where he met and became friends with Tammy. They got married on the 19th of March of 1990, and started a family together. Over time, the couple would have five children, and Chad began writing fiction based on his LDS beliefs. To publish Chad's books, Chad and Tammy, a husband and wife team, started Spring Creek Book Company in 2004. Their first books were about LDS teachings that were aimed at children. After a while, however, Chad began to write whole novels. In the time they have had their publishing company, they have put out over two dozen books. There is a theme to all of his books, which involves people from the LDS religious community experiencing the spirit world, or dealing with their issues. Eventually, he began living the life he had written about in his books. In 2015, Chad claimed he heard a voice telling him to relocate from Springville, Utah, to Rexburg, Idaho. So, having picked up their belongings, the family moved about four hours north of Springville, to a place that Chad says is very significant for him. At this point, Chad was convinced that he could see the past and the future, through the spirit world. As a matter of fact, he believed that he could remember and see other people's past lives. The following month, Milani moved to Rexburg into the same housing complex to be part of the people who ushered in the 144,000. On the 9th of August 2019 at Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, Tylee, Laurie, Alex, and JJ had taken a trip and a photo taken from that trip was the last recorded sighting of Tylee. On the same day, Chad and Tammy signed an application to increase her life insurance cover to the maximum amount. The next day, cell phone records indicate Alex headed to Laurie's house at 3 o'clock in the morning, then traveled to Chad's property, which is right near his pet cemetery. In the early morning hours of that day, Chad's neighbors heard a gunshot. During that time, Tammy Daybell was out of town visiting her family. Chad would text her later to tell her that he shot and buried a raccoon that morning in the pet cemetery. Laurie tells people during this period that Tylee is staying with his family. In the middle of September, a friend of Laurie, Milani, pays a visit to Laurie. She notices how Laurie is now talking about how JJ has turned into a zombie. The last time Milani ever saw JJ, was when she saw Alex holding him on the 22nd of September 2019, and that is the last time Milani ever saw him. On the morning of the following day, Alex's cell phone records show that he was on the property of Chad near a pond at 10 in the morning. Upon JJ's withdrawal from school, Laurie says he will be homeschooled. On the morning of the 9th of October, 2019, Tammy reported on her Facebook profile and to police that she had been shot at, in her driveway by a masked man with what she believed was a defective paintball marker. While he was trying to fire, the gun did not seem to be working. She asked him what he was doing, and he ran off. Ultimately, she reported it to the police and said it was a prank. Police even suspect what Tammy saw was a real rifle. Anyway, Tammy was found dead at her home on the 19th of October 2019.
Police were called to her house, and Chad wouldn't authorize an autopsy, so the cause of death was natural, and Tammy's body was buried. It is nearly impossible to believe that only 10 days ago, someone in a ski mask pointed a gun at her. Add to that her husband had increased her life insurance the month before. In October, Chad received the $430,000 life insurance payment. During the next few days, Chad and Lori took a flight to Hawaii and married there. Chad started telling people that Lori did not have any children when he returned from Hawaii. Apparently, to some people, he states that her kids are grown up, and to others, he states that her daughter died in 2017. Anyhow, by now, relatives haven't heard from, or seen Tylee or JJ for months. They have begun to become concerned. So they call the Rexburg police and ask them to conduct a welfare check on the children. The Rexburg police, on the 26th of November, did a welfare check of Lori residents, and asked where JJ and Tylee were. And Lori told them that J. J was in Arizona with family. That night, a neighbor saw Lori and Alex packing a truck outside her home, but claimed not to have seen any of her children. When Rexburg police and the FBI arrived the next day to search the home, it was abandoned. They searched the house but there is no sign of either the couple, or the missing children. When the police left the residence, Lori's best friend, Milani, told the officers the truth when they finally contacted her later that day. It was reported that neither of the kids was with her, and that she had no idea where they were. Reporters followed the Chad Loris as they enjoyed their holiday in Hawaii before they left to prepare for the second coming. They checked into a resort, and reporters watched them as they lived it up in paradise. Reporters repeatedly asked the couple if they had any children, and they said absolutely not. They said they had no children, and just smiled and ignored them. No comment? They've been missing for four months. You have nothing to say? You're over here in Hawaii? Where are your children? Yeah, why don't you just give us a comment? Just tell us where they are. Chad, where are Lori's kids? What happened to Tammy, Chad? Can you tell us what happened to Tammy? Why have you guys been in Hawaii for so long? Listen, just tell people what's happening. There's people around the country praying for your children, praying for you guys. Why don't you give us answers? That's great. That's great. That's great that they're praying for you, praying for your kids, what? You have nothing to say? Did you do something to your children? Are your children still alive? That's a simple question, I've got- Suddenly on the 12th of December, 2019, Alex died, just 10 days after getting married to a Chad Laurie follower, Milani Boudreau. Although an autopsy revealed that Alex died of a blood clot, most people believe he had been poisoned. While living in Hawaii, Chad and Laurie spent months pretending that nothing was happening, and they ignored all the requests from authorities to tell them where the children were. From December 2019 to January 2020, Rexburg Police, the Fremont County Sheriff's Office, and the FBI intensified the investigation into the disappearances of the two children. At last, on the 25th of January 2020, the Coeur d'Alene Police Department, gave Lauria a notice to deliver Tylee and JJ to the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare or to the Rexburg Police Department within five days. They searched their rented townhouse and saw the rental car that they rented. As the couple walked away without a vehicle, reporters were there to record the event, but they continued to ignore everyone. Looks like Lori ignored the police's order to show her kids. I don't think she takes any police threats seriously, since she believes that the end of the world will happen in July of 2020. She believes that the second coming of Christ is going to happen. She is going to have a pool party with Jesus, and all these cops and other dark spirits who were trying to punish her, will become dust in the wind.
Lori was arrested on February 20, 2020 by the Kauai Police Department in Princeville, Hawaii, and charged with two felony counts of desertion and non-support of dependent children by Madison County, Idaho, prosecutors. She was also charged with three misdemeanors, including resisting or obstructing officers, criminal solicitation, and contempt of court. When authorities were working on the investigation, they found a storage unit that Laurie rented, filled with items belonging to both Tylee, and JJ. Surveillance cameras caught Laurie, Alex, and Chad moving things into the storage unit over months. And by time, authorities finally uncovered the texts from Chad to Tammy in which he told her that he buried a raccoon in the pet cemetery. He also said that he found it to be in good health. In talking with family members, they could find out on a map where the pet cemetery was located on the Daybell property. This information was matched up with Alex's phone records showing that he was paying for Chad's property on the 18th of September. And they obtained a search warrant for Chad's home. On the morning of the 6th of September 2020, police and FBI officers searched the pet cemetery and an area near the pond. To begin, they removed the top layer of a four-foot square patch of grass. They began pulling up the sod, and topsoil, which revealed three large white rocks, flat rocks. Beneath the rocks, they found thin pieces of wood paneling. Below that is a layer of black plastic. One of the crime scene investigators, cut a hole in the top of this plastic, like, a plastic bag. And they cut through that. They then observed what looked to be brown human hair. The same color hair as J.J. Vallow. It appeared to be a small body tightly wrapped in black plastic, covered in duct tape. It was J.J. The second investigator's team were searching, a different part of the yard, this is an area the Daybell family called the Pet Cemetery. They dug up a cat. They dug up a dog. But as they dug further, they found some strange things. They found a melted bucket. Under the bucket was a partial human skull. What turned out to be the remains of Tylee Ryan. Because of the condition of Tylee's remains, it's hard to tell what happened to her. The only thing we can know for sure is that, at one point, whoever did this, dismembered her body and burned it. The thought of Tylee ending up that way was almost too much for them to bear. On the day the authorities discovered the first set of remains, Chad got in his vehicle and left the property. About a mile away from his house, police followed him and pulled him over. He was then arrested. It has been positively identified that the remains belong to 16-year-old Tylee Ryan, and 7-year-old JJ. Chad and Laurie had prophesied that the second coming would occur on the 22nd of July 2020, which is actually the date it came to pass. It did not seem to make a difference, whether Laurie understood that she might have been wrong about killing her kids, or not after that day came and went, while both of them were in jail. Now, the police exhumed Tammy's body and autopsied it, believing that her death was suspicious. After the autopsy was completed in February of 2021, the autopsy results have not yet been released. Even though Chad and Laurie spent a year out of court in anticipation of their trial on the 24th of May 2021, a grand jury will indict Chad and Laurie Daybill on first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder in the deaths of Tylee Ryan, J.J. Vallow and Tammy Daybell. A couple of days later, Laurie was deemed incompetent to stand trial and was committed to the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare, where she remains today. Quite simply, either she's putting on a show as if she really is the coldest-blooded woman on earth, or she truly believes that her doomsday theories are true, and that her children are zombies who should be killed. Alex was also certain of their relationship when he buried his 16-year-old niece, in a pet cemetery. Afterwards, he took his disabled nephew, seven years old and buried his body the same way. We are talking about the murderous group of a brother and sister, who have convinced everyone that they belong to a crazy cult. On the 29th of June 2021, Laurie Fallow was indicted by an Arizona grand jury for conspiracy to commit murder in Charles's death. 
In August, the prosecution announced that they'll be seeking the death penalty for Chad Daybell. The case is still ongoing, but with the evidence against them, they will not be acquitted. Chad will either get life in prison or the death penalty. Laurie will either spend the rest of her life in a psychiatric facility or prison. Thank you for sticking with me until the end, I appreciate watching this.